Meta recently released the latest version of their XR SDK in which they got in a lot of changes and updates. Among them, there were two additions that stood out the most. First is the scene decorator. This lets you decorate your room with prefabs based on the room objects and the surfaces. This is something that I'll be covering in my next video. The second addition that stood out was the immersive debugger tool. This tool helps us debug the application from within the headset. In this video, we'll see how to set up this tool and see how we can use it during our development process. Alright then, let's get started. So here I have my project open which has been set up with the latest Meta XR all-in-one SDK and it has been set up with all the player settings. You can also download this project from the GitHub link provided in the description below or if you want to set this up from scratch, you can check out this video over here. Now, let's set up a basic scene by adding a camera rig and a pass-through layer. We can do this by navigating inside Meta, Tools, Building Blocks. From this window, add the camera rig, pass-through layer, controller tracking, hand tracking and scroll all the way down and add virtual hands as well. Adding these blocks would have created a game object called camera rig with tracking space to track our headset, left and right hands and controllers and also a pass-through block which enables the pass-through layer on our headset. Next, to enable the immersive debugger tool, click on the meta icon here at the bottom right corner, select immersive debugger and enable it. Here are a bunch of settings that you can configure as per your personal preference. For example, you can have the tool to display on start. You can have the tool to display your camera rig's rotation or you can even show the inspector and console. For now, I'm going to disable these but remember that these are just default values. You can change them inside the debug editor once you launch them. So, how do we launch this tool? You can connect your headset using link or air link. Now, if you're not sure how that's done, you can check out this video over here and press the play button. However, the only downside of using link is that it does not use the OVR overlay composite layer, which means that the text is not going to be so sharp and it might be slightly blurry. If you feel you can manage with that, then that's the way to go. However, if you feel that it's really blurry and you cannot read any values, then the other way is to go inside file build settings enable the development build and you'll have to build and run this application onto your headset now in this case the text is going to be really sharp and legible however you will have to build and run your app every single time you want to debug now while we are talking about some of its limitations there are two more that you should know first is that it is not compatible with openxr plugin yet it's just compatible with the oculus plugin and the second limitation that i noticed is that we are not able to use hands to interact with the debug tool i'm pretty sure meta will bring out updates to fix these issues all right now let's have a look at some of the functionalities of this tool here we have the control bar panel. The first icon allows you to control the transparency of the panels. The second icon over here allows you to anchor the panel either to a fixed position or lets you move it along with your headset. And the third icon that you see here lets you enable or disable the rotation of the panel with respect to your head's Y axis. And the fourth button that you see here lets you toggle the panel distance between default, far and close. Now out of the two buttons on the right side of this panel, the first button allows you to toggle the inspector panel and the second one allows you to toggle the console panel. This console panel works exactly like Unity's console panel. It lets you toggle the information logs, warning logs and error logs. It lets you collapse the identical logs and even clear the entire console panel. Now coming to the inspector panel, it lets you watch the variables at runtime. It allows you to click buttons to call different functions. It has the toggle eye icon to show or hide the gizmos and it has UI that lets you tweak the variables at runtime. On the left side of this panel are the categories. Right now we have just one which is Meta XR. This is a selection of pre-configured XR debugging item that comes out of the box which we can turn off in the settings. However, later on when we create other categories, we can use this panel to easily switch between them. So this takes us to the next part where we see how to add debug options and categories. Now this can be done in two ways. First is by using the inspector component. Let's assume that we are trying to build a mixed reality experience where you can shoot projectiles in your room. To do that, we'll have to first get the room data and write a script that will allow us to shoot the projectiles. So navigate inside Meta, Tools, Building Blocks, select the Scene tab and add Effect Mesh. 
Now this block will add the MR utility kit game object to the MR UK script, which is responsible for getting the room data. And it also adds the effect mesh game object with the effect mesh script, which will help us to visualize the room by adding the material that has been referenced over here. Now there are two parameters that we need to configure over here. First is that we need to enable the colliders. And second is that we need to go inside labels and uncheck global mesh. Next, import the shoot projectile script. You can download this from the link provided in the description below. This is a really simple script which takes a projectile prefab, a spawn position, force and projectile size and shoots it when you press the A button on your right control. So here we are in Unity. Let's create an empty game object and call it as projectile shooter. Add the shoot projectile component to this. It needs a projectile prefab. So let's go ahead and create a sphere. Scale it down to 0.2 in all the direction. Add a rigid body component. Make sure the use gravity parameter is checked. Then select the sphere and drag and drop it inside the asset folder. Then you can delete it from the hierarchy. Select the projectile shooter, select the sphere, drag and drop it inside here. For the spawn position, we can navigate inside camera rig, tracking space, select right hand anchor and drag and drop it in here. And finally, set the projectile size to 0.2. At this stage, we are not sure if a force of two units and a projectile of 0.2 size is the right value. So this is where the immersive debugger tool comes into picture. So let's add the debug inspector component to projectiles shooter. And if you scroll down, it will show you all the components that are attached to this game object. Right now we just have the transform and shoot projectile script. So since we want to edit the force and the projectile size, we will check this box, toggle the drop down menu. And here we want to enable force. And if we open this, we want to make sure it is tweakable and the minimum and maximum value can be anything. It can be 0 to 1000, but I think realistically it can be somewhere between 0 to 15. And you can set a color for color coding. Similarly, we want to set the projectile size. So let's check this box, toggle the drop down, make sure it is tweakable. And uh, we want the size to be somewhere between 0 to 1, which is perfect. And let's give it a color. Now here you'll notice that both of them have category. So if we give the same name, they're going to be compiled into one category. We want it inside projectile shooter. So let's type that. Next, I can think of a scenario where I want to be able to disable the effect mesh during runtime to see how actual mixed reality feels like. So once again, I can add the debug inspector component, select the effect mesh component from this drop down, and in here, we want to enable hide mesh field, toggle the drop down, make sure it is tweakable and you can assign a color of your choice. And also let's add a category. I'm going to call it as effect mesh. Now for some reason, if you want to toggle the colliders, then you can enable this as well. Now, once you have added the debug inspector and selected all the properties that you would like to debug, you can save the scene and press play. Alright, so here I have my room environment and now if I press the A button, it's going to shoot the projectile. But as you could see, the size and the force is not accurate. So in order to debug it, I'm going to press the B button, which is going to open the debug tool. And now let's open the inspector window. And here we have three categories, Meta XR, which comes by default, Effect Mesh, which we created to hide the mesh like this, as you can see here. Or to toggle the collider so if i toggle this on and now when i press a you can see that the projectile just falls down however once i toggle this off once again the collider works and the last category is a projectile shooter which we can set the force and size so i'm going to increase the force by somewhere up to 3.8 or maybe 4 and decrease the size to 1.5 and now when i shoot the projectile i think the size is fine let's see the force yeah, I think I'm happy with the force as well. So once you have finished debugging, you kind of have to remember these values. So that's somewhere around 4 and 0.15. All right, now what if I keep my controllers down and use my hands? So since I can shoot it with the A button, which is similar as pinch, you can see here that I'm able to shoot it, but it's going in the wrong direction. But why? How do we figure this out? So let's grab our controllers and this time go inside Meta XR, scroll up and here we want to enable the right hand anchor. And now when you look at your right hand, you'll notice that we should be shooting the projectile in the negative X axis. So let's exit the play mode. Here select the projectile shooter, set the force to 4.5 and projectile size to 0.15. Next open the shoot projectile script here. Inside the shoot method, we want to change this direction based on whether we are using hands or controller. Now there are various ways in which can be done. Now the easiest way is to have an if statement 
and see if the OVR plugin dot get hand tracking enabled method is returning true or false. Now, if it is returning true, it means that the hand is being tracked. So we can copy the script over here, paste it inside the if statement and change this from forward to negative right direction. And then else we want to spawn it in the forward direction. Now you can save the script and go back to Unity. And this time when you save your scene and test it out, you'll see that you will be able to shoot the projectile using your controllers. And when you keep them down, you'll be able to shoot it using your hands as well. The second way of adding debug options is by using scripting attributes. Although the inspector component is easy to use, scripting attribute gives you more options like adding gizmos and drawing lines between two vectors. Let's assume we want to track and visualize the spawn point with the help of a gizmo and also track and visualize the hit point of a projectile. Now to do this, we'll first open the shoot projectile script. Now in this script, first we need to declare the package that we'll be using, which is meta.xr.immersivedebugger. Next, as we want to visualize the spawn position, let's go ahead and add the debug member attribute over here. And now we can use the attribute parameter to define the type of gizmo we want to see. Along with this, we want to define the category as well. And that's about it. Now you can save the script and go back to Unity. Here, let's create a new script and call it as projectile info. Now in this script, once again, we'll define the library we are using, which is meta.xr.immersivedebugger. Let's get rid of this code over here and define the debug attribute by declaring debug member, followed by the gizmo type, which is going to be cube. And then let's give it a category. Now, if we look at the definition of debug gizmo type, you'll see that for a cube, we need the variable to be of a type tuple, which takes a vector three and a float. So here we can declare private tuple, vector 3 comma float collision point and then we can use the on collision enter method to create the collision point now along with this we can also debug the room anchor that it is hitting so we can type debug.log followed by name and then get the name of the collision point and that's it now you can save the script and go back to unity and now for the last step we need to select this sphere and add the projectile info component to it and now when you test the scene so here we have the debug tool. If we go inside the projectile shooter, along with these two parameters, which we are getting from the debug inspector, we have the spawn position, which we are getting from the debug attribute from our script. And now if we toggle the visibility, you'll be able to see the gizmo on top of the spawn position. Now before we shoot a projectile, let's go inside the console window, enable the debug log and clear the console. And now when I shoot a projectile, you'll be able to see the logs over here. For example, it first hit the screen and then it's on the table. Next, you remember that we want to get the uh, point. So for that, you can click on the projectile info and if you toggle the visibility you'll be able to see the hit point over here now as you can see the next hit point is on the wall so the hit point has been changed from there towards the wall i find this tool to be really helpful especially when the values have to be tweaked from the editor in a vr environment i'm sure many of you will be able to relate to this as well and that's it for this video thank you so much for watching make sure to like and subscribe and i will see you in the next one